everybody, welcome to the Jim Masters Show live entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series. Hope everybody's doing well today. Boy, are we excited. We have an extraordinary guest, music legend from the iconic The Fifth Dimension. In addition to being the lead singer and founding member of that iconic music group that we love so much that continues to perform today, she is also a wonderful author, philanthropist as well, an educator. She is uh, <laughs> she is grandmother to three and great grandmother to five. Yes, absolutely. We're talking about the incomparable Florence LaRue joining us here live and direct from her beautiful home in Los Angeles, California, where she says it's quite warm. We're here on the East Coast in the New York area and uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. And at the time of this show live, it's a beautiful 85 degrees and sunny with a light coastal breeze. Florence LaRue, founding member, lead singer of The Fifth Dimension, joining us here on the show. We welcome you. Thanks for making us a part of our wonderful experience that we present for you. That is The Gym Master Show, where we've done over 750 episodes, seven days a week with guests that come in from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, and so much more. With our light love and levity, as we always say, or our famous JMS levity, Viewers, if you would like to comment while the show is live right now, we welcome you to do that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Jim Masters TV. We, we see we made it real simple for you. We just took my name and added TV because I work professionally in television and radio. And it's Jim Masters TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's no cost. You can comment right now and we can see some of your comments and you can chat amongst yourselves and celebrate uh, all that we do and celebrate life in our JMS Lovety chat room which is open right now for subscribers to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Also, uh, don't forget to leave a comment on the YouTube channel and just spread the sunshine. We're going to have a good time with Florence here on the show. And I see a lot of comments already built up in the JMS Lovety chat room. That is fantastic. Nice to see everybody here. We greet you. We welcome you. And uh, we send you a lot of our uh, JMS Lovety. If you're not having a good day, Stick with us. We always put a smile on your face with our poignant conversations and our light, love, and levity and all the other things that happen during this show, especially when you're live. Florence LaRue is one of the incredible performers of our time. You know, back in 1967, a little known vocal group called The Fifth Dimension recorded the song, one of our classics, one of the favorites, one that makes you feel good every single time you hear it, Up, Up, and Away, which catapulted the group to instant stardom. Countless magazine covers, world tours, and several Grammys later, The Fifth Dimension, recognized as one of the most prolific soul R&B groups in musical history. The Fifth Dimension has made over 25 million in sales with 22 top hits, top 40 hits, and five number one songs, including Up, Up, and Away, Wedding Bell Blues, One Less Bell to Answer, Last Night, I Didn't Get to Sleep at All, and the iconic Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. They have performed on the world's most famous stages, including Radio City Music Hall, alongside Frank Sinatra, and the Hollywood Bowl. They've delivered unforgettable television performances on The Ed Sullivan Show, Soul Train, The Tonight Show with... Another broadcast icon, one of our favorites, Johnny Carson. The Fifth Dimension has secured its position in the Grammy Hall of Fame with 14 gold records, six platinum records, six Grammy Awards as well. And in 2015, the Fifth Dimension celebrated 50 years of extraordinary entertainment. Original founding member, lead singer Florence LaRue and company continue to deliver dynamic performances that stand the test of time and captivate audiences from Las Vegas to Manila, Philippines and more. And while remaining true to their original five-part harmonic sound, the fifth dimension remains versatile, attracting audiences of all ages and nationalities. And within the last decade, the fifth dimension has taken the stage with several prestigious symphony orchestras, entertained at the White House, performed for families at Disneyland in California, Disney World in Florida, demonstrating the group's diverse appeal. And the iconic group continues to sell out venues across the United States, Europe, and Asia, and so much more. It's really incredible. We have lots to talk about, lots to share. Now, Florence herself 
intelligent, beautiful, talented. Those are words that are frequently used when describing glamorous Florence LaRue, the remaining original member of the fifth dimension of the course of her phenomenal career that produced the 14 gold records, six platinum records, six Grammy awards, and numerous other awards. Ms. LaRue continues to surprise her fans with her talent, stamina, and endless energy and whether on stage performing lecturing or serving as a celebrity judge for beauty pageants such as miss universe Ms. larue juggles her roles as speaker vocalist actress mother playwright grandmother great-grandmother humanitarian with the same electric perfection that she devotes to ballads such as one less bell which bears the signature fifth dimension sound she says she gives her best to whatever she's involved in and she has loved every second of it. She has performed all over the world, including a State Department sponsored tour of the Communist Europe and a tour of England, as we mentioned with Frank Sinatra. She's also starred in the stage play Ain't Misbehaving with the group as a national tour of the US and a solo artist. She starred in the musicals Mo Magic and More Magic in Canada. And her schedule in Fifth Dimension is also included, as we mentioned. White House performances, Las Vegas, and so much more. She continues to tour throughout the world, and uh, she is as elegant, glamorous, and talented as ever. We were just having a beautiful conversation just moments ago. Of course, you know the original Fifth Dimension, right? There they are, famous faces. They have really left an indelible mark on not just the music industry, not just Americana, but internationally as well as one of the groups with a unique special sound that really is hard to replicate the fifth dimension have always had the original and the current incarnation of the group have always had this exquisite beautiful sound that whenever you hear their music you're always wanting more and that's what's fantastic about their music and um, like i mentioned and i'm sure you guys have Every album <laughs> in your collection, you guys know I do. I'm a big uh, aficionado of music and collector of music. And uh, whatever your favorite song is, they have just continued to press on with absolute beauty. There's a wonderful cover of Ebony. They were in the cover of Ebony, the original group as well. And uh, song after song now as i mentioned the fifth dimension and headed up by florence continue to perform today we're going to talk about that she also has written a beautiful book one that you will definitely want now i know you guys that listen you, the ones that watch our show regularly you're very proactive whenever we talk about books or different things that are guests have, you usually jump online and order it right away. We'll tell you about how you can get the book and more music, but this is a phenomenal book and we're gonna share that with you as well. And as I mentioned, The Fifth Dimension continues to tour uh, today, headed up by Florence LaRue. And we're gonna talk about all of this and uh, so much more. Here they are doing their thing on television, on stage, yeah, you know, she could easily retire 10 times over and say, you know, I've done my part. I'm done. I, I did it all. You know, she's got the great grandkids and all, but she is a true talented performer and she loves people. And that's why the group continues today, which is really, really something absolutely special. So with all of that said, <laughs> and gang, that is truly just the short list uh, for this extraordinary American, if not international treasure that we are very honored to have on the Gym Masters Show live series. Let's welcome Florence LaRue to our program, live and direct from her home. She's got the gold records all around her. She's in Los Angeles, California. Florence, welcome to the show, my friend. Well, hi, Jim. I hope I can live up to all of that. <laughs> Oh, well, absolutely. You have uh, over and over, and it is truly an honor and a blessing and a joy to have you here. I mentioned to you that um, we have a positive, inspirational bent to our series. We're always looking for ways to make people smile and engage them and introduce them to, you know, wonderful guests and just really celebrate life. That's yeah. something that you have been doing probably ever since you were a child, right? You've always loved the simple things in life, the joys and blessings of life. They continue to inspire you today, don't they, Florence? Yes, they do. And as I said in my book, I want people to live and not just exist. 
You know, as, as a matter of fact, you, you mentioned that I had a great grandchildren. So people say, well, she's been with the fifth dimension over 50 years. <laughs> and she, start, she started when she had finished college. How old is she? <laughs> February 4th, I celebrated my 80th birthday. Oh, boy. it's hard to believe. Well, happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Florence. We love you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Oh, How's God. that? Did I pass the Thank test? You, Jim. All right. I love it. I love it. But Thank you, you know, very much. You know, Jim. Um, we, as a matter of fact, with our music, you mentioned uh, the R&B group. We really uh, can't categorize ourselves as R&B, pop, or right. someone uh, coined a phrase that we really like, and that was champagne soul. Oh, because yes. Although our records were um, what they called pop at that time, yeah. our show is very well-rounded. We, we even did Best of the Jew from Pagliacci at one time. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we like this the, the saying champagne soul. It's so true. It really, yeah. really is. I tell you, it's got such a smooth sound. Let, let's talk about even before the fifth dimension. I know a lot of people like to start with the fifth dimension for you, but early on in your life growing up, uh, you hail from the Keystone State, beautiful Pennsylvania. So you're an yeah. East Coast kid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you still got that East Coast vibe in there. And uh, you, did, were you inspired early on? Did you, was there a musical family, you know, around you? Was there always music on in the house? How were you first inspired to go into music? Because I know initially, uh, in addition to being a brilliant singer and author and, and all these other fabulous things I mentioned, you're also an actress. And I know early on acting was the thing that sort of was the thing you were after first, right? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, first of all, there was always music around me. Yeah. And when I was at an elementary school, I played the violin. And I really, even to this day, enjoy classical music. I used to go yes. and sit in the, way up in the balcony and listen to Eugene Ormond, the oh, yeah. Philadelphia Orchestra. Mm. But um, when I was uh, uh, asked to join the Fifth Dimension, I, I didn't want to join the group. I said, hey, I'm not a singer. I'm an actress. I wanted to go into the movies. I wanted to be an actress. But as fate would have it, and God led me to uh, California, my family moved from Pennsylvania, uh, Glenside, which is a suburb of Philadelphia, and we moved to California, where I went to college. And I wanted to be in the movies. I was never, um, didn't know how to go about it. So friends took yeah. me into beauty contests, and I was blessed to be Miss Valverde and Miss Coppertone, all these different contests. Yeah. However, when I entered the Miss Bronze California contest, I won the talent. And a young man came and said, oh, I have a group and nothing's happening with it. So one of the girls left because she got a great job. Would you join us? I said, no, no, no. First of all, I'm not a singer. I just sang because they told me I had to participate you know, in the talent. And he bugged me and he kept telling, I said, plus I'm working full time and taking 15 and a half units in college to get my degree in education. I don't have time to be in the group. You know, I'm, I'm one of the <laughs> Well, that young man was Lamont McLemore, who was a photographer for the contest. I joined the group and of course the rest is history. Hmm. And years later when the group was quite popular, a young man, gentleman came to me and he said, I know you don't remember me, but I was one of the judges when you were in the Miss Bronze California contest. And all the ladies came out and performed with their gowns and they performed their talents, but you came out in that white suit, the big white hat, and sang April in Paris in French. And Eartha Kitt, who was one of the judges, looked at the rest of us and said, now there's your winner. Mm, wow. So I think to this day, they're probably young girls saying, oh, how did she win? I can sing circles around her. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe it's because I was different and, and I learned it was also more than just the talent, it was about the presentation. So I am yes. blessed to have been asked to be in the group. 
we are blessed that you were asked to be in the group as well. It uh, has become just a wonderful, you know, uh, treasure trove of years of incredible sound and music and that you've been a part of. It's absolutely glorious. You also, uh, you know, you went to college, you've got the degrees, you were going to go into education as well. Tell us about that. That might surprise some of the fans. I believe it as, as a child, I've always enjoyed learning. And I still remember my fifth grade teacher, Miss Stover. She was just wonderful. And she was the one who really encouraged me to go into, into teaching. Uh, to this day, I enjoy teaching people. And they say, I've often been asked, well, you're, you're wasting your education. No, I use the things that I learned. And to me, teachers are some of the most underpaid, under-respected people that there are because they are are um, molding our the children are, of our future. That's right. And they, they don't get the respect that they deserve. Um, but I, I enjoy teaching and I support the teachers. And I think it's a wonderful thing to do. It really is. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, and, you know, being a lifelong learner like you are as well, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And to pay it forward and to mentor others yes. is exquisite. And you uh, know you love to, do that. to learn. You never, it, what, what, right. you have to continue learning. I still take music lessons. I take voice lessons to this day, because as I said, you want to continue growing no matter what you do. That's right. Exactly. So, you know, we've had uh, some interesting times the last couple of years, and it's been a time of great reflection and rebooting and refreshing. And it's been a time to uh, look at our lives and, and next chapter and what we would like to do going forward. How have the last few years of the craziness of everything that we've experienced um you, given you, know, you time to pause and, and look yeah. at your life going forward? When I think of COVID and what happened, people were uh, locked up in their homes. I think of it as a caterpillar. A caterpillar can either be squashed or it can be nourished and then grow into a beautiful butterfly. Or it can be a seed in the dark, damp, dirty ground and grow into a beautiful flower. So we have to use these times to continue nurturing our, our knowledge, taking care of our bodies and our health. That's another reason that I wrote the book. You know, you want to continue growing, taking care of your health, uh, eating properly, exercising, even in, at home. You, maybe you can't get out and walk or do the things that you used to do. You can walk around your home. Uh, there are things on the internet that you can do to exercise your body and stay healthy. And if some people say, well, you know, I'm too old. You're never too old to start. You can always begin uh, um, getting better at whatever you do and taking care of your body. It's never too late to learn to, to get better. Absolutely right. You are spot on. Never too late and keep yeah. going and keep doing your thing. And whether yeah. whether any things that as well you learned about yourself during this downtime, this time, the last couple of years? I learned that I really enjoy um, communicating with people. And one thing that I did to, to communicate with people, I had um, what I call a prayer line. And, oh, yeah. and every Wednesday, women, especially older ladies who were alone and lonely, some of them depressed, could call in and talk about anything they wanted. I only had two rules, no no uh, arguing politics or religion, but if you want to good rules, <laughs> but if you want to share a recipe, if you want to share something about your grandchildren, you know, and um, each Wednesday there was a word. And for that word, I would have music. Uh, for instance, one night the word was prayer and the song was the prayer by Celine Dion. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. So it was, it just gave ladies a chance to, to talk, and I say ladies because most of these ladies had outlived their husbands. Their husbands mm. had passed, and yeah. they were widows. So it gave them someone, a community, people to talk with and to share things with. And I found that I really, really enjoy that, um, inspiring people, encouraging them. That's so beautiful. And you've been doing it for years through the music. When you had the opportunity initially to then be a part of the fifth dimension, 
what was that like, you know, when you're getting into the studio, you're hitting the stage for the first time and, you know, mm -hmm. the family back home in Pennsylvania are rooting you on. And then they see the growth of you as a talent and as a person also in this iconic group as the notoriety starts to really take off for the fifth dimension. What was that experience like early on for you, Florence? Well, believe it or not, the, the first part of it was scary for me because as I said, I didn't consider myself a singer. So I had to, um, I sang with people who were more experienced in, in vocalizing and singing than I was. And, and it was a bit scary. I was, I was a little uncomfortable and I didn't like recording. I didn't like recording because sometimes you had to sing a song over and over, over to get and over. over, you know? So finally one day it was put into my spirit. Listen, if you're going to be a singer, maybe you better learn how to sing. <laughs> so I began taking vo vocal lessons and that's what gave me um, more confidence and more enjoyment being a part of a group. Um, and and um, communicating with the audience. And at first, communicating with the audience was difficult because I was very, very shy. Mm. And um, I was also very nearsighted. Mm. So I didn't wear my glasses on stage, so I felt, you know, comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Then one day I got contact lenses. Mm. Well, let me tell you, when I put the contact lenses on and could see the audience and the communication, it opened up a whole new world for me. When I could see even men in tears when I sang One Less Bell and see the reaction, that really was very satisfying to me. And I really now enjoy communicating with the audience. See, that is, that is the test of a true talent and understanding that it really is a full circle experience. Yeah. Sometimes people mm -hmm. just really focus on just the music itself, the, mm -hmm. the performance aspect, but there is the audience. There are those consumers who are there, mm -hmm. consumers of the material, excited and hopeful and engaged. And when you acknowledge them and when you celebrate them and even interact with them, it's a whole other dynamic and experience. You've been very aware of that, which I think is fantastic, Florence. Yes, it's like it's like a conversation. And you don't do all the talking. You allow them to also respond. That's right. And that's the key to, to all of it. So as things were developing, and again, you know, these amazing hits started coming like I mean, up, up and away. Uh, tell us about that. What an incredible song. And it's one of those songs that whenever you hear it, you just feel good. <laughs> you know, when we first got together, um, we were sing singing uh, R&B because Motown was very popular at that time. That's right. And then, uh, but our manager, Mark Gordon, who I ended up marrying, believe it or not. <laughs> yes. He introduced us to this young man who was trying to have his music recorded, but people weren't really into it. It was really um, beyond what was what was going on at the time. Yeah, the orchestrations were bigger and it was just different. And that was Jimmy Webb. Oh and, yeah, sure. Yes, yes. So Mark introduced us to Jimmy Webb and my favorite Fifth Dimension album is the Magic Garden. Oh, Which, yes. Have you heard that? Yes. It was such a beautiful album. Uh, the songs were connected by melodies and it told, I think it was one of the first albums to really tell a story. It told the story about a young lady that he was in love with. And Jim wrote every song except one on the album. Mm. That's My incredible. My favorite Fifth Dimension song that we recorded is a song called uh, misty roses because yes. the lyrics say you look to me as misty roses too soft to touch but too lovely not to try oh the lyrics uh just a beautiful song isn't that incredible yes yeah. i tell you so much great music over the years and you had opportunities as well as i mentioned which were extraordinary to uh, travel overseas too even the State Department sponsored a tour for the Fifth Dimension to go over to communist Europe and tour England as well with Frank Sinatra. What was that experience like for you? It was great. It was a tour to Eastern Europe. At the time, it was communist. And um, I remember when we went to our sound check, there were men from the Communist Party sitting there to uh, to to 
judge the show because they wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be anything that would cause a riot. And our manager, Marco, says, you go back. And he talked with them. He said, look, the State Department sent us. We're going to present our show. There were even armed guards with dogs backstage yes. just in case of anything that happened. Well, at the end of the show, the audience rushed to the stage. And it was, it was just frightening. But they wanted to touch us because we were their touch to the free world. And I'll mm. never forget that feeling. It was just wonderful. Isn't that incredible? Yes. Wow. That's something that sort of sticks with you forever, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it uh, shows the importance of music and how music can bring people together. Yes, absolutely right. It, and it's, you know, it's very healing too. It's the universal yes. language. It's yes. the great healer. Uh, it knows no boundaries. And uh, it's, a, it's surround yourself, gang, with as much of it and uh, of Florence LaRue and Fifth Dimension's music is possible because it really does make you feel good about life. You know, I mentioned also some other things, too, that are very special. You starred in the stage play Ain't Misbehaving mm -hmm. with the group as a national tour and as a solo artist in the musicals Mo Magic and More Magic in Canada. Tell us about that, being on stage in the, the plays oh. and having opportunity. That, that ties in some of the acting background, too, that you love so much. I'll tell you, Jim, those experiences taught me that musical theater is really my favorite thing to do. Because as you said, it's music, but it also gives you an opportunity to act. And it's very difficult explaining the difference because people have said to me, well, you're on stage with the fifth dimension. You're on stage singing. Theater is it's just different. Uh, there's the discipline. And um, I, I don't know, it's, it's something special about musical theater. I really, really enjoy the costumes. And uh, it was just wonderful being able to have those experiences. I hope to maybe do some more musical theater. Oh, boy. Did you hear that, folks? I hear what she just said? <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned to her website, and she'll announce if she is. That would be really, truly a, a blessing. Have um, you ever seen It Misbehaving on Broadway? Oh, yes. Oh. Absolutely. You well, know, we I were lucky. Um, I, I mentioned this with a couple of uh, other guests who grew up sort of in the, the New York tri-state area. We didn't even realize, even as kids, where some of the class trips, even as children, would be into New York City, to Radio yeah. City, to Broadway, to all of these great shows. And then, of course, as time marches on, to have that access really is a blessing. So to be yeah. able to have access to see these brilliant performances, um, kind of lucky. <laughs> yeah, and we were blessed because, you know, the original cast of Ain't Misbehaving, <coughs> excuse me, Sure. Had three ladies and two gentlemen. Well, a fifth dimension was just the opposite. So I ended up having to do two parts. And it's funny because one of the parts I had was uh, a comedic part. Uh, this young little girl who was supposed to be uh, a singer, she couldn't really sing, but she was dating the nightclub owner. So he let her sing. So she had <laughs> to sing this song and it was kind of off key and ended up with a real high note that broke the glass. Well, I like to go in the ladies room and just go into a stall and listen to get to see what people really think. And this one little lady said, oh, weren't they great? But that one little girl, she couldn't sing. And I felt so great because I said, oh, I did it because I was really, you know, kind of afraid of doing comedy. I've never done comedy before. I said, well, I did it. <laughs> but doesn't she realize that I'm also the one that sang those ballads? Yes. <laughs> and our viewers think they were the only ones that went into the stalls to listen to what people were saying in the bathroom. <laughs> it's a smart technique. <laughs> it's a smart technique. That's where you really hear what people think. Uh, that is fantastic. That is really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, these opportunities just continue to have flowed your way. Um, you even had the opportunity, and this is always a blessing and an honor, to perform at the White House. Uh, oh, tell yeah. us about those opportunities as well, Florence. Those those, those were wonderful opportunities. Uh, we performed for several presidents. And I'd say you may not be performing for the president that you voted for, but you're performing for the president of the United States. And that is such an honor. I think the, the only regret I have in my career is that we didn't get to sing for Obama. 
Right. Yes, of course. I can imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But uh, still having those opportunities, really, really fantastic. Also yeah. uh, performing in many of the most prestigious rooms in, in Las Vegas too, right? Oh, yes. We we performed uh, in the, uh, the lounge at Caesars Palace and evidently Sinatra heard us. Next time we went in, we went right into the main room and opened for Frank Sinatra. That was really quite a thrill. And we were performing at the Americana Hotel in New York City, and uh, we had been on the road for quite a while. So our voices were, you know, a bit tired. And I had a solo of a beautiful song called How Insensitive. Well, after the show, this gentleman came back and said, Oh, he really enjoyed the show and he said that he was a singer and he sang How Insensitive and that, that I had done a good job. That was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was like, oh my goodness. And we ended up touring with him, performing on his uh, television special and it was really quite an honor. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, old blue eyes, the chairman of the board gave you a thumbs up. That's a big, <laughs> that is a big th thumbs up for sure. You've even, you know, because there's a family aspect to the sounds and the music as well, um, the family-oriented show has allowed you guys to perform at Disney World and yes. Disneyland and actually many family-oriented groups and organizations too, right? Tell us about that. Yes, and I'm very, I feel very honored when young people come because many times um, our fans are older and they'll bring their family. So the kids sit there and so, oh, I got to hear my folks old music. <laughs> But after the show, they said, hey, you guys were great. We enjoyed it. That, yeah. to me, is a big honor when the young kids say that they like our music. Isn't that incredible when you have yeah. that opportunity? Yeah, and it's just been, you know, something that continues to roll on through the years, as does the music. We're talking about 25 million in sales for the fifth dimension, 22 top 40 hits, five number one songs, Up, Up, and Away, and, of course, Wedding Bell Blues and One Less Bell to Answer. Oh. Such an extraordinary song. What does that song represent and mean to you, Florence? First of all, Hal David and Bert Baccarat wrote a beautiful song. And to me, it's, to me, it speaks of something that most people have experienced, a heartache. As a matter of fact, when I sing it, sometimes I end up in tears and people say, oh, are you okay? But when I see people in the audience crying who have ex experienced this, it lets me know that I have done my job by communicating with them and by hopefully Hal David and Bert Baccarat were pleased with the way we presented their song. But I, that's uh, such a beautiful melody and meaningful lyrics. What a wonderful song. That's exactly what it is. Yes. And, you know, when you when you work with folks like that, you know, how David Burbachrack, some of the greatest mm -hmm. in the industry, huh? Penning such phenomenal music over the years. And, you know, I've tried to write, but I am not a writer. I like to write lyrics. But every time I write a melody, it sounds like something I've heard before. So I really admire people who can create beautiful melodies that it is difficult isn't it i mean you, you write you would write something and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. uh it, it does sound like something else it's it's, yeah. it's 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 genius for folks who are able to create the melodies yeah. and uh you know do it where it does come out as something completely separate from anything else we heard um you know it's funny <laughs> uh Florence and I were on the phone last night chatting about, you know, today's show. And I said to her, um, now make sure you get some rest, go to bed early, <laughs> rest up, get that beauty sleep. And uh, when I spoke to her just before we went live, you know, we always chat with the guests before. And I love to do that. Um, she didn't quite say this, but it might have been something a little close Last night, I didn't get to sleep at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's another top seller, uh, a fantastic one that has been interpreted so many times, too. Um, tell us about that great song. That's a great one. I can hear that in my head. These are songs you can hear in your head, even when you just say the title. 
I always enjoy singing songs that I can um, identify with. I, I don't think I've ever sung a song I didn't like because in the, if I didn't like it, um, I couldn't really express what the writer meant. And I don't have to really like it a lot. I shouldn't say that I didn't like because I have sung songs that I didn't like, but songs that I didn't understand or weren't able to communicate something. Because I want my audience to feel something, whether it's happiness, sadness, or I, I, I want to communicate. I want to have a conversation with them yes. through music. Exactly. Um, the years performing, you know, with the original incarnation of the group, what were those like? Of course, Marilyn McCoo, Billy Davis, I mean, everybody that was in that group. Uh, and then, of course, they eventually uh, moved on. But in the early years with performing with everybody, uh, you sort of, you know, you become like uh, family, right? Oh, yes. We were like family. And thank goodness, because there was also a lot of sadness uh, for me because I was married and had a son and had to leave him because he was in school. When he when he was born, I carried him with me and had, took a nurse with me, uh, even in Europe. But when he started school, I had to leave him. And that was very difficult for me. I, I believe I wouldn't do it again. I would put my career aside and, to, and be home with my child until he got older. But we had many, many wonderful experiences. And fortunately, we were like a family, so we had each other. So I had my fifth dimension family, just as I do today. You know, that's what's wonderful, too. People might not realize that is, um, did the group ever pause? You know, when changes happened in personnel, was there ever a pause or did it just, did you just keep it going? And what was the inspiration to want to keep it going? Cause some people, you know, when the, some originals leave, they're mm -hmm. like, okay, I think we're going to just call it a night, but you really wanted to keep this going and entertaining and inspiring mm -hmm. people with the music, right? Yes. We kept going because uh, we were still offered, you know, job opportunities to perform and we enjoyed the music um, as, a, as a result of not stopping. Sometimes we had people come in and leave because either they would get married or, you know, would have some other reason for leaving. But we never did stop. We've kept going for all over 50 years. What are some other incredible um, memories with the original Fifth Dimension that still are some of your top I mean, we talked about some of them already, but a few others that really stand out for you over the years when you look back at those early years with the group, some of your favorite moments. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. There were so many. Of course, there's the Harlem uh, Music Festival, which ended yes. up being in a documentary, which won a, an Oscar. Yes. Um, you know, you've mentioned most of the White House and the, the European tours just performing was, was wonderful because we were able to uh, be a family. And when we weren't performing, we even had our meals together and travel together. It, it was just a, a complete wonderful time. I must tell you, I'm not really the historian in the group. Ron Townsend, who passed away some years ago, what, could tell you where we played, what we wore, what we sang. <laughs> With me, it was uh, just all very enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely. Were yeah. you able to do acting along the way or was the music and then the touring and the studio work, what really was the main focus? And, and, yeah. the, and the fact that was also the main focus, it wasn't until um, years after the original group it dispersed that I took time off from the group to be in the plays. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I often tell people, you know, sometimes people want to be, want to have careers as soloists. Yes. And they don't have the opportunity. But if you're even if you're a background singer, no matter what you're doing, do the best you can. Because I was discovered uh, singing background in the fifth dimension. Um, the the director of the play came and heard the group and said, Oh, there's my lead for my play. So you never know how or when you're going to be discovered. So always do the best you can. And don't just do it to be discovered, but just be the best you can in whatever you do. 
It's amazing too that, um, and, and again, it's probably a testament to your upbringing, your values, your morals, just your way, your ethic, um, to be able to be in the limelight like that on stage, studios, television shows, touring the world with this extraordinary legendary group and balance, you know, marriage and children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, still be able to do that and everybody's happy and beautiful experiences. Um, that's something that is incredibly near and dear to you, of course, but how have you been able, some may be looking at you and saying, how the heck did Florence balance all of this? What are some it of the secrets? It was easy, Jim, it was not <laughs> easy. And I'll tell you, as I say, my spiritual foundation is very important to me. And notice I didn't say religious, I said spiritual, because I always say God wants spiritual fruits, not religious nuts. <laughs> but that has always been very important to me. It's kept me grounded. And you have to have, um, you have to have, I put God, family, career. You know? Yeah, that's a beautiful. Yes. That's a beautiful order. So you, you um, depend upon faith during. Oh, Yes all day long, but especially during times when things were a little confusing, a little tough. Um, and that's absolutely beautiful to have that, that background really to have. No matter that how you believe, you know, because people are always saying, well, if you don't worship the way I worship it, you're wrong. No, no, no. I respect all religions and, right. um, and people who aren't religious. Yes. You know, I, I respect everyone. You know, God's given us a choice. Yes. And I found that having a, firm foundation has really been good for me and it's kept me alive i say that because when the original fifth dimension got together you know the, it was the flower children and drugs were all around i had people hand me drugs because i had always had a lot of energy and so sometimes people assume that i was involved in drugs which i was not but because i had that spiritual foundation i knew it wasn't wrong and i didn't get involved in it and i was blessed because i've seen people who have really some of them have even died because of it yeah absolutely that's great that's um, a positive message there for anybody listening as well um you guys had an opportunity to be on the ed sullivan show soul train the tonight show with johnny carson some iconic television specials yeah. and series what was that like for you it was wonderful, wonderful. I tell you, Ed Sullivan was great. I'll tell you, but one of the one of the shows that I always remember. You mentioned Frank Sinatra. Well, we performed for Frank Sinatra's uh, special, and we it was um, Budweiser was a sponsor. Well, we had the rehearsal, and then after the rehearsal, we went and uh, all the you know big wigs from Budweiser came in. Just they were ready for the show. And Mr. Sinatra said, oh, no, there's no show. That was it. The rehearsal was fine. It's not going to get any better. Well, thank goodness at the rehearsal, you know, we all performed the best we could. But there was one young lady who performed. And um, if, if you look closely, you can see she doesn't have shoes on because she had a gown. So it was just a dress rehearsal. So she didn't wear her shoes. But you always have to do your best because you never know if you're going to get a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> what a great tip that is gang right <laughs> for the viewers they're all commenting they're all saying hello they've already designated you a gym master's show lovity we mentioned oh, the show has a lot of light, 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 light. now how i mean you're surrounded by beautiful gold records all these wonderful things there are you know gold and platinum records there's grammys oscars tellies and tonys and emmys but how does it feel florence larue to be considered a lovity on the Jim Masters show. Oh, I like that word, Lo anything with love in it. But you know, Jim, I really appreciate the awards we've gotten, but they can't, they can't talk to me. No. They can't hug me. You know, when I'm, when, when I'm alone, I'm, I'm single and have been for a long time. Yes. I said, I'm surrounded by all these beautiful things, but what's really important to me are my friends. Yes. Unfortunately, Jim, most of them on the East Coast where I grew up. But you we gotta talk. come back for a visit. <laughs> um, no, we talk. We talk often, and I I really miss. I don't know. There's something about the East Coast. I, I find that there's a a, a realness. Special, 
special also, kind of friendship too. An authenticity or realness. Yeah. It's yeah. not about, oh, how big is your house or what kind of car are you driving? Sometimes, who are you wearing? I'm not wearing anybody. I'm wearing clothes. <laughs> 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 it's California for you. But back in, it's like, oh, come on and have some dinner, you know. Yeah. Let's go, you know, talk. Yeah. I, I miss that atmosphere very much. Well, you'll have to come back and enjoy some of the pizza and the clam oh, chowder yeah. and a good yeah. Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. <laughs> the hoagies. I'm one of the few people in California who knows everybody in uh, and surrounding. There are people who don't even know who lives in the next apartment here. And right. I, you know, I think it's I, now. Don't be wrong. I love California. We, our weather is fabulous, but um, I think it's because many people come to California to make it. So yeah. it's, it's very me oriented. So focuses on but that. I, I have wonderful friends here too. But you know, when you grow up with them, it's like you have history and that's what you miss. So the roots of the East Coast of the United States. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and that's probably where you get some of that grounding maybe and some of that, you know, that ec ethic, especially yeah. that, you know, that tremendous uh, familial uh, way of thinking, which I think is absolutely uh, beautiful. You have toured around the world too, the US, of course, Canada, Europe, Asia, uh, performances on national television shows, including, which we love, PBS specials, and, oh, yeah. and, uh, which is really, really fantastic. Um, do you see more of that happening as well? Is the group now that you know you can travel a little bit more going to be touring? Hope to you know maybe get back to Europe and other places as well. Well, yes, uh, of course, our touring was halted for a while because yeah. of COVID, but things were pushed into the next year. So we are going, at, and we have many, many shows on the East Coast. I don't know why, but we perform there more so than we do here. The the only um, problem with that is usually when we're performing i don't have enough time to visit with yes, friends yes with everybody so but um yes we we continue to travel all over the world we were in uh the philippines and uh of course canada oh niagara falls is one of my favorite places to perform at yes. the falls view there yeah so, yes we're continuing hopefully you have a, maybe a new cd for you ah that would be fantastic yeah. That would be absolutely amazing. Yeah. Book, I'll be having a book tour, which will take me also on the East Coast. Oh, cool. We'll definitely be there for that. Um, let's talk about that because I know we're we've been focusing on the fifth dimension. We'll talk a little bit more about, you know, the the version that is touring and producing and you're in now that you love so much, but you also uh, have penned a spectacular book. I love this. Grace in your second act, a, a guide to aging gracefully. Um, what was the inspiration for this? Because I know this was a labor of love for you on so many different levels, Florence. Jim, I've been working on this book for five years at least. Um, people would come up to me, and they know that I'm older, and they would say, how do you have so much energy? And what do you eat? Do you exercise? What do you do? And then also, on the other, on the other hand, around the holidays, I would go into senior homes um, and sing for the seniors with a mm. group, of, um, group of people. Yeah. And then I would see people lying in bed, older people, mm. um, some of them, no, no family pictures on the wall, no, no visitors. Mm. And it was so sad to see them just lying there, not living, just existing. Yeah. So I'm encouraged to, to inspire people to take care of their health so that, you, you know, our science is having us live longer, but we don't want to just exist longer. We want to really live longer. Right. I first titled my book, uh, let's see, what, what did I call it? Let Your Life So Shine, PMS. And they said, PMS, well, that's not a good title. But I, I meant physically, mentally, and spiritually. Right. So I, <laughs> I, I changed your title to Growing Old Words. So they said, don't say that, the old word, old. <laughs> you have to say mature. Mature. And some people, old people I know are not mature. They just ain't old. <laughs> but I changed the title to 
aging gracefully, mentally, physically, and spiritually, because that's what I want to encourage people to do, to take care of their health mentally, physically, and spiritually. So in the book, tell us a little bit about it. Are there tips? Is there advice? Are there your own personal stories as well? Tell us about uh, what people can expect when they read this book. Because our audience, like I said, they're proactive. They're going to be ordering this probably today, if not already during the show. They jump on everything quickly, which is great. Right. Well, you can get it on Amazon. And although I really had older ladies in mind when I wrote it, because these were the people asking me the most questions, it's also good for young people to prepare for their second acts. You know, if you take care of yourself when you're younger, you'll have a better and healthier second act. Now, it's also, it's not never too late to start. I started doing marathons, Jim, when I was in my 60s. Did and really? Yes, I've done over 15. Now, I didn't run and I didn't do the full marathon. I walked, but I completed the half marathons and I want people to know that you don't have to do a marathon. You can do a 5K. You don't even have to do a race. You can just walk around, as I said, walk around your house, walk around your block, enjoy nature, but move, do something to keep moving. That's an East Coast word, block, for sure. Absolutely. That's what we say. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what block are you? Right. <laughs> and you have a stoop in front of the house. <laughs> right. Swings on the stoop. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you also, and again, we're, we're celebrating, of course, your extraordinary, iconic and beautiful career. Always been a giver, always been somebody who inspires people in such a glorious way. And your voice is like melted butter, all of that. Um, but you also have a couple of shows that are your own, right? Tell us about the individual shows that you do separate from all the work you do with The Fifth Dimension. Well, I have a cabaret show that I do um, called Just As I Am, which I really don't have time to do because I'm busy with The Fifth Dimension, but I did it because I wanted people to know Florence LaRue, not Miss LaRue on stage, but to know who I am and where I came from to get to where I am today and to let them know that you can come from a small town where no one knows you and uh, God can direct you to have the career and to have your dreams come true. So it's called Just As I Am and it tells uh, my, it's autobiographical. But as I said, I haven't been doing it uh, very often. I did it at the uh, University of Kentucky and it was very well received. And I also have a cabaret show, which I sing um, mostly jazz because singing with the fifth dimension, we're, we're blessed to have so many hits that our show uh, consists mostly of our hits. So we don't have time to do anything else. So by having a solo show, I had a chance to sing uh, some other songs that I like besides fifth dimension songs. But as I said, I'm busy touring with the fifth dimension and with my book signing tour. So I don't have a lot of time to do too much. And now that I'm 80, I'm slowing up just a little bit. <laughs> you, you've earned it. Like I say to some of the guests, you could easily be, you know, in South Florida, swaying in a hammock with a banana colada in your hand, oh, your no, feet no, in the no, sand no. saying, you know, I've done it all. I've done, but no. that isn't you. That is not you. All that, Jim, there's, there's Many other things to do, yeah. <laughs> there are many other things to do, exactly. Yes. Um, you know, we'd be remiss not to talk about um, Aquarius um, and, and, you know, that song. And tell us when that came along, what it was like to, I mean, the, the fanfare, the response, Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. That's just one of those songs that you just feel really good. I mean, it's it gets deep. What was that yeah. like for you? Aquarius was another gift from God because we were performing again um, in New York when New York's been very good to us. And one of the gentlemen lost his wallet and someone found it in a taxi and returned it. So we invited this gentleman to our show. And then he invited us to his show. Well, the gentleman was one of the producers of hair. And when we heard Aquarius, we said, we've got to do that song because it spoke of harmony and and positive and hope. 
And a lot of people have asked us about it. Oh, are you an Aquarian? No, I don't believe in astrology. Uh, we did it because it spoke of things being positive. Well, we took the song to our producer, Bones Howe, and he says, well, there's the cast album out already. Not, you know, not a lot is happening. But then he came back to us with the idea of putting Let the Sun Shine with Aquarius, which we liked, and the rest is history. That's incredible, huh? Yes. I mean, these songs, like I say, just saying the title, you can actually hear them in your head and it makes you uh, right. Yes, exactly. Um, what are some of your other personal favorites? You mentioned a couple. Are there others that you really gravitate to? Well, of course, like I said, I like um, One Less Spell and my, my very favorite is uh, Misty Roses. Um, I, I like I like all the songs on the Magic Garden album because they tell a story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Now, now Up, Up and Away is special to me uh, because, you know, when we recorded Up, Up and Away, I was engaged. So David Mears, who was our PR man, said, why don't you get married in a hot air balloon? I said, well, it's never been done. Why not? Yeah. So I did. I got my wedding invitation said, you are invited to the parking lot of the Century Plaza Hotel in Beverly Hills, because that's the only place we could put up a hot air balloon in the city. And sure enough, that's where I got married. My husband, my uh, Jimmy Webb's father, who was a pastor, and I went up and it was a beautiful California day, blue sky. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. My beautiful, my beautiful. Yeah. And again, you just you just want to start singing it. It, it was tethered, which meant it couldn't go flying away. <laughs> <laughs> you made sure, right? <laughs> yeah. But, we, but have, we have been in balloons that weren't tethered several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's like the wind where you go, where you land. <laughs> right. <laughs> to be determined. So now for folks that are watching that are like, wow, this is, you know, really cool. I, I would like to check out a fifth dimension, you know, performance. You guys are still performing. You're doing your thing, which I think is really awesome. What can they expect? What, uh, what happens at a new Florence LaRue fifth dimension concert of today? Well, hopefully you hear your favorite fifth dimension song because we sort of took a you know, we asked, you know, which were people's favorite songs. We try to get them in. I'm very proud to say that we sing them just as you heard them on the record. We don't do any updated versions. So um, you'll hear your favorite Fifth Dimension songs and, and a couple of new things also, just to keep it fresh. What is it like when people come up to you, even today? I mean, they have over the years, but they come up to you and they really share with you how much you and and all involved with the fifth dimension over the years how much you mean to them how much the music has been a soundtrack of their lives the birth of the baby the marriage other things that you know have happened in their lives where music has surrounded them your music has surrounded them it must be something extraordinary when you get the feedback when people actually take the time to, oh, there's a great shot. Look at this shot here. Yes. Isn't that something? Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Tell us everybody that's in it. Of course, Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds. Yes. It's, it's it, all the ladies. I call, I call it the ladies who sing the band. That's from uh, Ain't Misbehaving. The ladies who sing yes. the band. <laughs> I love that. But, but it must really be amazing when, uh, People do come up to you as they have over the years and they open up their hearts and they share oh, with you yes, how much yes. the music has meant, huh? Yeah, they've named their children after, you know, Bill or or asked, ladies have asked their uh, boyfriends they Bill to marry them. It, it makes you feel good to know that you brought happiness to people because in our world, so many people uh, listen to the news and they're depressed and they don't have hope. So when you can bring some happiness to them and they can sort of put their troubles aside for a while, it really makes me feel good to know that I can inspire them and let them know that there is hope. 
There really is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and music, again, like we keep coming back to, can really inspire mm -hmm. people to head in that direction, hopefully stay in that direction. Speaking of people of inspirational nature, you've surrounded yourself with some iconic people as well. Johnny Mathis. Oh, yeah. What a great shot of the two of you there, huh? Oh. Another another great soul. Oh, yeah. Talent. And so humble. Are you yes. never never realize how you know how great he is because he's just very very humble and, and nice yes yes and uh oprah of course oh yeah yeah oh wow isn't that a great one and look at this shot wow oh, i actually got to dance with him with cat Palloway. i mean he whirled me around the dance floor like i was a rag doll <laughs> <laughs> he, he meant business right he really yeah oh, that, that is Oh, uh, that's a great shot. Yeah. Looking yeah. back. Tell us about uh, some of the other folks that are in the group with you now today. They're super oh, talents we as well, huh? Some awesome singers. This isn't the latest photo. That isn't either. The other one with the, um, the gold, the black and gold, that, yeah. that, that is the latest group. There we are. Of course, we have a real bass singer in Floyd Smith. He's on the left with the glasses. And then next to him, we have Leonard Tucker, who's an awesome singer. Oh, I'm hoping to do a duet with him one day. And then the last gentleman is Sidney Jacobs. And Sidney has his own CD, and he's an awesome jazz singer and writer. And then below him, we have, um, <coughs> excuse me, my goodness, I'm sorry. Uh, this, this young lady, she sings with, a, uh, she's a, asking a pastor, Patrice Morris and a fabulous gospel singer. So we have the the ingredients to do all different, once again, all different types of music in our live show. Wonderful people, my fifth dimension family, really lots of love. Isn't that incredible? I mean, that's yeah. just so fantastic. Somebody asked, um, I know you mentioned you're not necessarily the historian, but probably uh, maybe you know about how the fifth dimension name came about. One of our oh, viewers asked that. that. Yes, yes. Well, when we first got together, we called ourselves the Versatiles because once again, we had five very different type voices and we thought, oh, the Versatiles. But then the record company and Mark, our manager, came to us and said, oh, we need something a little hipper, you know, than the Versatiles. So we thought of the Mark V because Mark was our manager and all these different names. But Ron Townsend thought of the fifth dimension because there was no fifth dimension and there were five of us. So the fifth dimension was our dimension of sound. How do you describe the sound? I know there was a opportunity, I think, where Motown even approached the fifth dimension too, to bring it into that world. But it's got a, there's a unique sound that even continues today that really is unmatched. How do you describe what that incredible harmonious oh. sound is, Florence? It's something that I think can't be matched only because it's something that we didn't create. It was created by the fact that we had five people with five different types of voices and yeah. uh, the arrangers, um, yeah. Bob Alcivar and uh, Renee DeKnight, the way that they arranged the voice, and Jimmy Webb, of course, the way they arranged the voices, uh, that's what produced our sound. It wasn't something that we say, oh, we want to sound like this. We didn't do that. It just came from the voices that we had to work with. Which is amazing, you know, to have the opportunity to have it blend in that way, because sometimes it doesn't always blend, but the, the blend is absolutely amazing, huh? And now we have a new um, uh, director, Ron Foyer Jr., who is absolutely fantastic and has put together some wonderful medleys for us to do on stage. He is just, well, actually, he, he's very talented. He's done America's Got Talent, and he makes He's done many things. Just got his first hole in one on the golf course. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but um, he's happy he, about that, I'm sure. He's done some awesome arrangements for us. Mm, that's incredible. We were looking also at some of the incredible albums over the years. I mean, there's, there's just so many of them, but. Uh, you know, you also have, uh, look at all of these. We were just, and of course, <laughs> Ebony. What was it like to be on the cover of Ebony? That was kind of cool, huh? Oh, that was, re that was really an honor. We were on Ebony and Jack. That was, that was yes. Great. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. 
taking a look at some of these other incredible albums over the years. Yes. Um, wow, the years fly. Don't they, though? Don't oh. they? You know, I used to think 80 was old until I turned 80. <laughs> now, <laughs> now it's mature. <laughs> now it's a, you're a seasoned veteran. That's right, a seasoned veteran of it all. Um, you pro There probably isn't anything you would ever change, right? It's just been an extraordinary experience, a learning experience. I mean, you've learned so much about, like you said in the beginning, acting and performance in that direction. And that vein was what, when you were... You know, growing up in Pennsylvania, USA was what you were going towards. And then you get plucked to be a part of this, uh, what has become an iconic group. And like you said, you didn't think you were a singer, though gifted with a beautiful voice that you <laughs> developed and honed and fine tuned over the years. Um, is there probably nothing you would have done differently, right? It's been, an, it continues to be. Things I would have done differently. Like I mentioned, I would have uh, probably set my career aside until my son got older and then gone back to singing. Um, I probably would have maybe even pursued acting more. When you look back, you can always change and make things better you know, as you grow. You mentioned to theater and wanting to possibly pursue more uh, theater. Um, that's exciting, huh? It's exciting. I'll tell you, theater is the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, great comments coming in. Jim and his wife are so talented, Pam. And I know Laura. I've worked with Laura on PBS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've, we've co-hosted together as well. And uh, Neil is saying, great show. Thanks, Jim and Florence. And Brian is, uh, I love these interviews. Thank you, Jim Masters, for having such wonderful guests like Florence, peace, lovity, and music. You're- uh, I love uh, lovity. I like that word. <laughs> that is it. You are part of the lovity family, my friend. Absolutely. Right. You were born a lovity. Your family, you know, the kids, the grandkids, the great grandkids, have any of them- um, stepped into this world of entertainment, the arts, performance? Not yet. Not. Now, my son, my son is a very talented um, movie maker. As a matter of fact, he has a movie on Amazon. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. But he and he's also a fabulous photographer. And uh, he goes by G. Lee Gordon. Gordon was my uh, maiden name, his, his father's name. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of his movie, but he's, he's a very fine, um, photographer. If you look under his name, it'll probably come up, right? Yeah. 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 That's exciting, huh? Very, yes. What's it like being a great grandmother? That's a blessing. Grandmother and great grandmother, uh, all of it. That That's a real blessing. Granny, you know, you know, a lot of um, women don't want their grandchildren to call their grand grandma. They better not call me for I am grand. I wanted to be Nana, but my mother was Nana. So I'm granny. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so special. That is so cool. What are additionally, and of course they are, what are some other things when you look at your wonderful life? It, it's You've been blessed and you know that but you've also been, what's beautiful about you and refreshing Florence, and I think this is one of the reasons why so many people gravitate to you, is you are real, you're authentic, um, you're kind, you're caring, you love to laugh, you love to have a good time, you like to make sure that you leave the room better than you found it, which I totally operate in that same vein, and you like to not only entertain, but inspire people, leave them with good feelings about living in life. Tell us about some of those blessings and joys in your life that continue to propel you forward doing that work. You know, Jim, sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough. And then I'll get a note from someone saying, you know, thank you for inspiring me or thank you for being, you know, kind to me. And you, 
you just never know how you're going to affect people by just little things. And and you don't have to give things. You can give a smile. You know, some people will say, oh, well, I, I don't have the money. To do. It doesn't take money to be kind to people. Um, I, I remember someone came up to me once and said, oh, you were so nice to me. And I'm saying, oh, I'm glad I was because, um, you know, it, it comes back to you. I've had lighting people say, you're the only entertainer who ever wrote me a thank you note. Just little things like that and really makes you feel good to know that you have been uh, a positive part of someone's life. Oh, and you certainly have and continue to be on many different levels that you probably aren't even aware of that people just really are so touched by you and those that you've had an opportunity to work with and collaborate with and create with as well. What are some of the other things that you're very excited about uh, that are coming up for you and the fifth dimension and your solo work and anything else? Well, just mainly you know, continue to perform. And of course, I'm excited about um, marketing my book. And um, and I've, I had a lot of men like the book too. So ladies, you know, read it and then give it to your husband. <laughs> that's it right do you see yourself now that you've penned that um do you see more in i the do art? have i do have a couple of books in mind that i want to write it would also be fun to write a children's book because i think if you can get young people to have hope and to believe in themselves it will help them when they become adults because often a children they, they don't believe in themselves. They, they think, oh, I'm not important. I'm nobody. Right. Everyone's somebody. You know, everyone has something to offer. So I think I might like to write a, ch a children's book. When you look at the compilation of all this extraordinary work and all these beautiful experiences, and, you know, we always, one of the things that we do in these careers, all of us that are in the public eye, is to make everything always look smooth and easy and effortless and, so that way there, when people consume whatever it is we're presenting, they don't have to worry about anything. They just enjoy it. But there's a lot of time put in, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, yeah. a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice put in as well. When you look at the body of work and everything that you've had an opportunity to experience, what's some of those key things that come to mind for you and just in the celebration of this extraordinary and continuing body of work through all this effort and blood, sweat and tears that you put in. I you know, people ask me, is it hard to perform? No, performing is play for me. It's a preparation. And anytime you do anything, you want to be prepared. It's the preparation. And also for me, the travel, travel has gotten to be very difficult. It used to be, um, you would go to the airport and your road manager would take care of everything. But now because of all the security, it's a lot more difficult uh, and traveling in the airlines that are canceling flights. So you have to really want to do it <laughs> and have a lot of patience. I know that firsthand <laughs> because we were, we came back from a television shoot last week and a beautiful yeah. shoot and a wonderful experience yeah. in yeah. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then our plane was delayed five hours and oh. then the, tr the transfer was to Baltimore and um, then we were going to go from Baltimore back home north, but there were storms that came through, yeah. canceled flights left and right. And we mm -hmm. ended up with hundreds of other people overnight in mm -hmm. chairs, some people on floors <laughs> inside Baltimore, Washington airport. Yes. <laughs> and everything was closed. You couldn't even get a coffee at McDonald's. That was closed overnight. And we didn't get home Would you until. Like they lost the luggage of everybody too. They, on top of it, they lost the luggage. And then, so, you know, we had to go to the baggage claim and there was all this luggage strewn all over the place when we got back to the airport North. And, uh, they, they said, well, it looks like they just shipped the people first and then said that they would figure out the luggage later. Wow. Eventually the luggage did come and they gave us a choice. You could go back to the airport you know, oh, yeah. and get it. And we'll give you a voucher, a $200 voucher to a future flight, or we'll ship the luggage to you. So I know we elected, we're going to the airport to physically get the luggage yeah. and we'll get the voucher. But what a, I never had that experience myself oh. where you're stuck in an airport, you see yeah. it on TV so much, but I've never had that experience until last week. 
not interested. <laughs> it's not. It's not but pleasant. You, I want to. I want to know. Did you act this love? Well, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I was in this. They actually had these wood rocking chairs in, in front of the big windows, so you can see the right. planes just like <laughs> sitting there, and it was raining. Uh, and, and I, you know, you dig deep for the lovety because <laughs> everything was closed and there was no food, and you know, I. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one thing Granny does, I always, I always take a little bag of, of goodies. Take some. Yes. Well, yeah. you know this. You'll laugh. Uh, one of the folks that uh, I was interviewing, she, um, she's a doctor too, and she bakes twice a week, and mm. she sent me home. Now here I am. I'm the person that interviewed her right. for, the, for this television show that I do uh, in New York. This television news magazine series. She sent me home, which was so fortunate, with this fresh baked sourdough bread. Ooh. And I made sure that I did not put that in the luggage that was going on the plane. <laughs> this was in the carry on because I was texting the back and forth. I said, you wouldn't yeah. believe what's happening here. We're stuck and all this other. Yeah. They said, but where's the bread? <laughs> where's the bread I gave you? I said, it's in the carry. But the thing is. I I actually didn't touch the bread. I I kept it. It was wrapped. It was in the carry on, uh, and I had it. You know, when we got home at seven in the morning the next day, um, because I knew that if I opened up the container that had that fresh baked sourdough bread, I would have been attacked by mobs. <laughs> I always put nuts and crackers, maybe some fruit, on my carry on, just in. <laughs> Just in case, <laughs> just in case. Um, this is really extraordinary. You truly, you know, when you look at all of this um, and everything you're doing and continuing to do on so many different levels as an author, as a philanthropist, as an educator, you're continuing to teach um, in so many different ways. Do you love to mentor young minds? Do you love to teach and, and influence those that are coming up the ranks. And what would you say to somebody watching and looking at Florence LaRue and understanding and appreciating her extraordinary career and all that you've been able to balance and it's, and it's worked out in such a beautiful way and say, gee, I would love to do something like that. What would you say to somebody watching who would be considering a career in these crazy but fabulous industries? First of all, I think it's always very important to pay it forward. And to, and to mentor someone. Now, if you have a mentor, you, it should be someone that you admire, but most of all, that you trust. I remember I mentored a young lady who was going to perform in a, uh, a contest. Fabulous singer. Well, at the last minute, she changed the song. She changed what she wore. She should have won. She didn't even place. So if you have a mentor, respect, have someone that you respect and listen to them and learn. Know that because they are your mentor, it's probably because they know more than you do. But also listen and learn and grow. I love that. Listen, learn, and grow. That is so important. The listening part and the learning helps you grow because a lot of people, they, yes, exactly. Oh. It's, it's an ongoing experience. I just wanted to show you somebody who's always here with us, who usually pops in towards the latter part of the conversations. And, and we don't, as you know, we, we don't call these interviews. We call these conversations like okay. the old school talk shows. Mr. George Burns is with us. Oh, <laughs> I got to meet him. I got an autograph picture with him. I would have imagined that you had yeah. an, what, so what was he like when you had an opportunity to. Funny. He was he? So funny. Yeah. <laughs> He, there he is. Uh, he's with his cigar. He usually pops in towards the latter part. We did a nostalgic show about two years ago and I put him on and my aunt collected dolls and uh, all kinds of real collectible dolls. Yeah. She was a serious collector. This got passed down to me through the family on my mother's side of the family. Oh. So I brought him on and uh, the audience yeah. always looks for him. He's got yeah. his little cigar, his red hanky. He's always <laughs> dapper in his tuxedo. He said... You knocked it out of the park, kiddo. He absolutely loved the conversation. He's always loved the music. And he sends love to you and the family from him and from Gracie. 
Thank you, George. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? And yeah. remember, he played God in the movie, too. Oh, God. Right. Right? So yeah. it's always good to have God on your side. Oh, yes. <laughs> your websites, too. We mentioned the websites, uh, FlorenceLaRue.com, which is a fabulous website, and also the Fifth Dimension Live.com to learn about uh, all the cool things coming up with the group. So check these things out um, to learn more about performances and all other cool things that are happening. And also the book, as we mentioned, um, the book, Amazon is the go-to place for the book, right? Grace in your second act. And young people, get ready for your second act because it's going to come. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I have to mention that's a beautiful and and very it's wholesome and refreshing. It's a it's a beautiful shot of you. Uh, you. Tell us about the cover of the book. Well, we had a photo session. I'll tell you what, what makes for good um, pictures, good lighting, and a fabulous photographer. And I'm sorry, my mind went blank on his name, but he is absolutely the greatest. Very little makeup. Yeah. Uh, you know, ladies, as we get older, we don't need as much makeup because we don't want it to get into the cracks. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> See, you've got beauty tips coming from Florence uh, as well. Oh, beauty tips. There are um, I tell you. recipes and a lot of helpful information in the book. Thank you, Florence. You're amazing. Such an inspiration, fun show today. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Florence. Uh, some really beautiful comments coming in. Um, Jen wanted to ask, Jen actually is watching from Pennsylvania. She yeah. is from Allentown, that area yeah. there. And she had a question. She wanted to know, she usually likes to ask the guests this question. It's, it's a cool question. She wanted to know, where is your Zen place? Where are you when you're Zen? Exactly what did she mean? Like you're a place for calm and peace and where everything is sort of zen balanced okay. and you just feel really at peace i have a corner in my bedroom where i have a beautiful chair that was my grandmother's chair i have a beautiful um music stand on which is my favorite bible and i have my second favorite book which is called um uh oh it's by young i can't think of her name now but those are my, that's my Zen place. When I sit there, I'm very peaceful. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, Maureen, who's watching in Arizona, she just wanted to add in here, which is a beautiful comment. She goes, she's a retired nurse from Arizona. Florence, you're an inspiration. Uh, you make me want to be a better person. And I'm sending you a tight, lovety hug. Oh, thank you. Thank Isn't you. that nice? There we go. There's yeah. a lovely hug to Florence LaRue from all of us here at the Gym Master Show Live. You're amazing. Really, I truly appreciate all of your wonderful wit and wisdom. It's so delightful to have you here on the show, Florence. We will keep the porch light on for you. You are truly welcome back anytime to the Gym Masters Show Live. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Our viewers watching live around the world and those who will watch this later are going to love this episode. Any final words about our conversation, the show, or anything you'd like to share, Florence? Well, Jim, thank you so much for inviting me and to, to everyone out there. Here's to grace in your second act. Live your life. Don't just exist. God bless exactly. you. Live it to the fullest. Absolutely. I hope the show met your expectations and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you, Florence. Thank you. I did, Jim. Thank you. You're very welcome. You take care. Be well. Keep smiling and keep creating, Florence. You are truly amazing and a beautiful soul inside and out. We love you very much. Sending you love, big hugs. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you be well and take care. Bye. Bye-bye now. The incomparable Florence LaRue here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Did you guys enjoy that? Yes, you sure did because we've been seeing the comments throughout the entire show. Thanks so much for all of the enthusiasm and for your passion. We took you down memory lane with some of the conversation about some of the incredible experiences that uh, Ms. LaRue has had over the years. 
with the fifth dimension and also with family and home and hearth and things that she gets to do of her own uh, accord, like her own performances, a one woman show, the cabaret show, the book that she penned as well, which you can get at Amazon. We'll show you that again, just a second, but truly a fantastic opportunity to learn a little bit more about somebody that, um, I know that we always, a lot of people throw that iconic word around and legend and all, but there are people in our lives that really have achieved that status. And she's done it with beauty and grace and patience and lots of levity. And that is very refreshing. She's got the East Coast sensibilities, the roots, the grounding of the East Coast, and still the, the flair and glamour. Uh, of the West Coast <laughs> and everything in between. She truly is um, a beautiful person inside and out. And I'm so honored to have had her join us here on the Gym Masters Show Live. If you would like to see this episode again in its entirety, you can because we'll uh, keep it archived with 750 other episodes right here for you on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Again, one of the founding members, lead singer of the legendary group, The Fifth Dimension, author, philanthropist, educator, and just a beautiful soul inside and out. Thanks to all of you for watching live. If you are watching this uh, later on in the archives, we thank you as well. Spread the word about our show. We've had so many guests come through from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, culinary arts, sports, comedy, and of course, inspiration to entertain and inform and have a good time with all of you. The Fifth Dimension Live.com is the website for the group, which continues to perform today. And of course, Florence's own personal website, FlorenceLaRue.com. And, uh, isn't that a beautiful name, Florence LaRue? It just rolls off the tongue. And uh, of course, the book as well. You want to make sure you get the book. I know a lot of you have been chatting in the Lovety chat room there, the Jameis Lovety chat room that you're already ordering the book. There it is with Ms. LaRue. Grace, again, in your second act, I tell you. Really beautiful. And there's a little bit, I'm sure a little bit about the cover in the back there as well. Is that just a happy spirit? The Fifth Dimension still doing their thing. And again, we took a look at some of the iconic photos over the years. Um, and there are many. We just pulled a few here to sort of hearken your memory. Yeah, really fantastic. Great music that has stood the test of time. Always had a great time together. And they still, with the new incarnation, all the different albums. And again, these are just a few. There are countless, countless more songs. I know what you guys are going to do. You're going to pull out your fifth dimension music and you're going to start listening to it. Ebony. And of course she mentioned they were on jet as well. And, um, there they are now as, uh, Florence mentioned, that is the group today. Look for them, uh, get tickets, don't let them come to your town or city and let them come in and out. Make sure you go and you enjoy because the music and the memories, isn't that great? The music and the memories are there. And Florence is just, she's having the time of her life. Again, as well, a mother, grandmother, great grandmother as well. Really beautiful. A lot of years, a lot of time put in, surrounded by, you know, amazing people. Great story she had about Cap Calloway, where he grabbed her, just spun her around, almost like a rag doll, she said, um, having such a good time with Florence. Let's take a look at come, some of the uh, comments that are coming in here, and then we'll wrap. Uh, Juanita is watching in South Africa, and she says, great show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for being with us all the way there from South Africa. Our audience comes from all across the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand. We thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we love you all. Uh, wow and wow, this was such a wonderful conversation. Really loved getting to hear about the amazing adventures of Florence's career. What a lovely lady. Thank you, Jim. I second that emotion. I second that emotion. And... Um, Ooh, this is great. Linda Johnson says, I see the Kindle version is at Amazon of her book. Yes, you can get it as Kindle on Kindle as well. 
So like I said, our audience is already, they're looking for the book. Linda says, she is so pretty. I agree. <laughs> Inside and out, a beautiful soul. Have a great day and night and lovely hugs coming in from Kathleen, who is watching in New York City and also adds, great show. She is so lovely. Thank you both. It is our pleasure. Sherry Larson watching in Kansas, USA. Thank you, Jim, for another absolutely fantastic show. Florence is wonderful. Please make sure you put her on your return list. We will definitely keep the light on for Ms. LaRue to join us again. Anytime they have exciting things that she wants to share. She just wants to, you know, she needs a boost of levity. All she has to do is stop by the Gym Master Show and we'll get it from her and we'll give it back to her. And claps coming in uh, from Shine On Me, 8-7. Thank you very much. We appreciate that as well. Big hugs from Linda. Pam says, thank you, Florence. Uh, Linda says, thank you. Love this so much. Jen says, awesome Zen place, Florence. Enjoy. She loved uh, the Zen place that, um, that she has. And Linda says, thank you so much for being here, Florence. And uh, those of you who did super chat, super emoji, super stickers, all that fun stuff, we thank you as well for spending time with us. And Linda Johnson did that earlier. She says, thank you, Jim and Florence. This has made my day. Oh, that is so good. And uh, Juanita says, sounds like an amazing book. Congratulations. Brian says, uh, new music, brilliant. So he's all excited about that with Florence as well. And um, this is really fantastic. We appreciate all of you. Now, gang, we don't say goodbye around here. We say, uh, see you later. Take care. Love one another. Be good to one another. And don't forget to love yourself. Florence is a big believer in that. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Very important to do that because if you're always caring for others, which is a beautiful thing, which I tend to do, uh, make sure, and I've had to learn this, you take time for you. Take time to have a cup of coffee, smell the roses, whatever it is that uh, is important to you. Listen to great music, spend time with family, give somebody a call. All of that is of great importance and great value. And you guys know we talk about that all the time here on the Gym Masters Show Live. So this was really fantastic. One more time, her website, florencelarue.com, thefifthdimensionlive.com. Check all of that out. Keep abreast of all the incredible things that are happening with uh, The Fifth Dimension and with Florence LaRue. I want to let you know as well that uh, there are amazing guests that are coming up as well. Um, we're so excited to, uh, we just had Angela Cartwright with us the other night. She starred in Lost in Space, the Danny Thomas show. She was with us recently. Freda Payne was with us. The Pointer Sisters have been here. Uh, Lucy Arnaz, Michael Lernard. Um, it's incredible. Tony Orlando stopped by the Gym Masters show. John Davidson, really incredible. Coming up, uh, we also have Nick Jameson. He was in the group Fog Hat. Remember them? Very popular actor, voice artist, comedian, singer, musician. Also has done voice for Star Wars and so much more. He is with us coming up as well. And so is Brian S. Wright, PhD, pianist, musicologist, founder of Rivermont Records. He's going to be joining us as well. We're so excited about that. Guess what? Also, from Disney's Mickey Mouse Club TV series. The gang is going to join us as well. We're really looking forward to that. The brilliant actresses, Maggie Egan Cummings and Jennifer Lynn O'Hara are going to be with us. They have a new movie that they're going to share with us. And that's just a short list of incredible guests that are coming up here on the Gym Master Show Live. Don't forget, there's some 750 or so episodes that you can binge watch at your leisure right here. One more time, we thank our illustrious guest, the incomparable Ms. Florence LaRue, founding member, lead singer of The Fifth Dimension, but also a brilliant author, philanthropist, educator, and all-around beautiful soul inside and out, right here on The Gym Masters Show for all of you. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure and give it a like. There's a thumbs up there on the YouTube channel. Give it a like. Leave a comment on the channel. That helps us expand our reach and grow even further. And we sincerely appreciate that here at the Gym Masters Show. So this is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, we thank Florence LaRue for joining us. We thank all of you for joining us all around the world. Truly a blessing when we get together here at Lovety Hall, the Gym Masters Show Live. We'll see you on the next one, okay? Be well, take care, and cheers. <laughs>